Association, the International Commission of Jurists, as well as ARC International, commend you for your report's focus on challenges faced by groups at risk, including LGBTI persons. Our organization supports your approach of highlighting some particular country situations by way of example. As examples of explicitly discriminatory legislation, you cite the Nigerian Same-Sex Marriage Prohibition Act, which in fact criminalizes a much broader range of human rights protected activities than its title would necessarily suggest. Uganda's Anti-Homosexuality Act and Ukraine's draft law on, quote, propaganda of homosexual relations. All of these laws impede freedom of peaceful assembly of LGBTI persons. The Nigerian law also interferes with freedom of association as it bans registration, funding, and activities of, quote, gay organizations. As to general provisions disproportionately detrimental to specific groups, you cite Russia's ban on so-called propaganda of non-traditional sexual relations among minors as an example of the application of supposedly neutral public morality laws against those who promote LGBTI human rights. Whether at the national level or in this council, states must not be allowed to masquerade behind vague appeals to public morality or traditional values to justify practices that violate international human rights law by discriminating on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity. Under international law, any interference with the rights to freedom of peaceful assembly and association must be provided by law based on legitimate aims set out in relevant instruments, proportionate to those aims, and necessary in a democratic society. Restrictions cannot be imposed for discriminatory purposes or in a discriminatory manner. Besides the negative effect on the rights to freedom of assembly and association, the laws at hand have a detrimental impact on the work of LGBTI human rights defenders and the activities of health care providers. Fundamentally, laws directly targeting the freedom of peaceful assembly or association of LGBTI individuals solely because of their sexual orientation or gender identity are inconsistent with international human rights law. Mr. Rapporteur, we welcome the attention paid to the human rights violations LGBTI persons face and call on you to continue to integrate issues of sexual orientation, gender identity, and intersex status in the activities of the mandate. In this regard, we note that in October 2013, Nigeria issued a standing invitation to all thematic special procedures. We would be interested to know whether progress has been made on your request to visit Nigeria, as well as your outstanding request for invitations to visit the Russian Federation and Uganda. We would suggest you also consider arranging a visit to Ukraine, which issued a standing invitation in 2006. Thank you very much.